Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Well, I think I should just about make it. It's now time for the cream of British strongmen to do battle once again. Welcome from Valleys in Minehead, where six athletes have already smashed their way through to the final. Now it's time for the final heat and to see which two athletes from this group can steer a successful course to join them. So, five men all with a common goal. From Scotland, Lewis McLean. The youngest man in the competition, England's Jay Hughes. Ulster's strongest man, Francis Kirby. Another Englishman, Paul Wood. And a competitor of World's Strongest Man 2006, Darren Sadler. After the hard work of the last three heats, I thought I'd relax and see what the fairground here at Butlins has to offer. For the athletes in this heat, though, the hard work is just about to begin. It's the duck walk and the anchor and chain. No easy way into a strongman event is there, and this uh, opening event far from easy. You've got to carry a 225 kilogram weight, 10 meters, and then drag an anchor and chain another 10 meters. Not easy at all. Yes, we should take a look at the five men that are going to attempt to do just that. Five men battling it out for two spots, the last two spots that are available for the final of Britain's Strongest Man 2007. Here they come. The five hopefuls. And first up is uh, Lewis McLean from Fort William in Scotland. Lane two, Paul Wood from England. He's Terry Holland's big mate and training partner. Lane three, Francis Kirby from Ireland. Francis is uh, Northern Ireland's strongest man. Lane four, Jay Hughes from England. Another one of those Kent strong men. What is it about Kent that produces all these and big guys? Lane five, Darren Sadler from England. And this man will be the favourite. Some world's strongest man experience. The Pocket Rocket from Borough Bridge. Take your position. How he hates that name. <laughs> anyway, off we go with the duck walk. And it's pretty even Stephen stuff at the moment, although uh, Lewis McLean's having some trouble. The other four, pretty much neck and neck. Well, that's a terrific win, though, for our four. Not, not a win. Francis Kirby has uh, lost all his momentum at a critical time. And that's allowed Darren Sadler to jump in and take it. Just when it looked like Francis Kirby was going to really upset the apple cart, and the battle is still on for third place. Kirby's got it together again to take second. McLean is trying to finish strongly after that uh, terrible start he made. A good comeback from McLean, but I wonder if Kirby is still ruining the fact that he was well in the lead there, and a little slip allowed Sadler to come and steal it. What a mistake it was as well. Just got ahead of himself, so close to the finish line, and Sadler... The experienced man that he is just kept on driving. But look at Jay Hughes in the grey. He was comfortably in third and then allowed McLean to get in and steal it. Well, Darren, that was an awfully tight heat, but you, you got there in the end. You kept your feet and over the line first. Yeah, with the duck walk, I seen everyone move in front of me and I panicked a bit, to be honest. Uh, I think I was a bit slower on that. Uh, but then I had to dig in on the drag and it came off, but the lads all did well. Now, for the shorter guys, it's more difficult, isn't it? You haven't got the weight to, to get behind that, uh, that anchor and train. Yeah, you do need a bit more body weight to go faster, but just have to dig in, you know? Just dig in. And could you feel the pressure from the guys either side of you? Yeah, they were, I could see they were fairly close. I didn't think I'd just got you know, in front of everybody. Uh, that's why you've got to just keep, keep your legs going all the time. Don't let it stop, you know? Once it stops, it's so hard to get moving again. Were you surprised by how well the, uh, the other guys around you were performing? Yeah, they, they did well there. They did well. Well, that's the first time all the athletes have completed this course. A great comeback from Darren Sadler, and Lewis McLean just pipped Jay Hughes for third. 
Sadler and Kirby then occupying the top two spots in their heat. Now, they're firm friends, they train together, but can they set that friendship to one side for the next event? It's one where we've seen athletes in previous heats struggle. It's the safe lift. And the reason they struggle is not the weight so much, Martin, it's the fact that uh, those safes swing around and it's tough to get a real good benchmark for what is a, a strong performance. Lewis McLean managed seven reps with the safes. From England, Paul Wood. Paul Wood. He had a, a real shocking start, so he's got to get his act together in a hurry. And up against him. And also him, from England, Jay Hughes. Jay Hughes, who uh, allowed himself to, to lose a place. He was in third, and he allowed uh, McLean to sneak past him. So these two fellas bringing up the rear at the moment. They've seen McLean get seven reps. Let's see if they can uh, go past the Scotsman. You can see how those safe swing, especially with uh, Wood's technique. Much more control from Hughes. Hughes, of course, a former bodybuilder, trying to use his arms, perhaps a bit too much. Well, as the former mountain biker, Paul Wood on the right there, trying to use his legs, drive with his whole body, a much more sensible approach. Hughes made that great start, but he's been uh, rocking and rolling a little bit since, and he's allowed Wood to get past him. Now, both of them are up and running once again, and they've both uh, got Lewis McLean seven in their sight. Wood is there, so too now Hughes. So one more will relegate McLean to third place. Hughes has got it, so too has Wood. This is quite a tussle these two are having. And that might be it, though, for uh, Hughes. There didn't seem to be much left in his tank there, but a great extra effort from Wood. Well, Hughes is choosing to stand up with it first and then drive with it once it's off the floor. Watch Paul Wood there drive straight off the ground. Much more sensible technique as we've seen. We saw Westerby going well over double figures when he did this with exactly the same technique. Uh, not much left is there. Paul Wood though. Breaks double figures. Jay Hughes started fast. And it all went wrong after the first 20 seconds or so. Well, I bet if we were in a gym, Jay Hughes would definitely have the stronger shoulders, but uh, the smarter technique won. Well, Paul, great effort, 10 lifts. Is that going to be enough for you? Um, I think Darren's just about to go. I think we're going to find out, but I think Darren's got more than me. Please welcome the last two athletes. And here comes Francis Kirby and Darren Sadler in the yellow. Well, Kirby, Ireland, a creditable Francis second Kirby. in that first heat, but uh, Darren Sadler really is the gold standard in this event. The little fella England, packs an Darren awful lot of power. Sadler. He's perfectly built for this event. In the past, of Britain's strongest man, I've. Um, I've nearly made the final a few times, but uh, obviously it's been a few years and I've improved a lot since then. So hopefully this year, you know, I should make the final. Uh, and obviously last year I nearly made the final of World's Strongest Man, which is a higher standard. Um, so hopefully uh, my bits of bad luck won't catch up with me and I should go through. I enjoyed the experience of World's Strongest Man and it, uh, it taught me a few things, but uh, maybe luck wasn't just on my side. So hopefully I can qualify again this year and go back and, you know, and have another go. The final event of the World's Strongest Man uh, was the barrel load, and anybody in our heat could have gone through, the first man or the last man. Uh, so it was down to the wire, and unfortunately, I had a bit of bad luck and a bit of a barrel slip and never got through. Oh, no, he's lost the barrel. Oh, that could be expensive. Uh, that's played on my mind a little bit, so obviously, I've got a bit of a point to prove this year to redeem myself from that, so hopefully, I can. I'm about 18, 18 and a half stone this time. Um, obviously, still five foot nine. Um, which helps you in some events, like the pressing events, you're a bit shorter. Um, and obviously with the higher loading events, it doesn't help you. Um, and obviously we've been a bit smaller, maybe I'm a bit fitter than some of the heavier guys. A bit more stamina, and that can help. I don't really get too stressed before these events. Uh, it's just a case of when you've competed for a while, trying to keep cool, really. I think you can get too stressed and it can sometimes make you go backwards. But if you can just keep you cool a little bit and when you're ready to go, then, you know, a little bit of adrenaline, a bit of nerves maybe helps just before. If I got through to the final, I would say the biggest threats are uh, probably Terry Holland and Mark Felix. 
Uh, maybe even uh, the new guy, Mark Westerby, looks quite good. The other, the other men in my heat um, that could um, could be a threat, probably Francis Kirby, because he's got a, a natural strength, a good strong back. Um, and maybe Paul Wood, because he's quite fast on his feet. And we don't have quite as much uh, strength as uh, Francis, but he's, he's very fast, so they could be a threat. Paul Wood's 10 is the benchmark. And all eyes will be on Darren Sadler, really, as we just take a look at uh, Francis Kirby to see how he starts off. It's Sadler that is flying. And he said himself that uh, these events are the ones where he's particularly strong, and he's ripped through seven, make that eight, without drawing breath. He's choosing not to put it down on the ground each time, and I thought he might just hit the wall, and he has done. Now he's trying to drive straight off the ground, and it's a, a much more sensible use of the body. Kirby could slowly catch here. He keeps using this same technique. Well, Kirby needs to uh, find a few more. He's still uh, one adrift of uh, Lewis McLean's seven. And Sadler will be looking to take maximum points here. He's level now with Paul Wood. And Wood looking on as if to say, am I going to get equal first here? Or does Darren have other ideas? Darren doesn't look too good after that very, very fast start. He's put an awful lot in. Does he find 11? Yes, he does. So he takes maximum points from this heat. All eyes now switch to Kirby to see what he can do. And he is still stuck on six. And he's in big trouble. He's in real trouble. He's walked away in disgust. Huge disappointment to the Ulsterman there. Sadler just made it, though, didn't he? I think if this was a log lift, he would have blown Paul Wood out of the water. Paul Wood's technique was so good. And there's his buddy Terry Hollins giving him a, a shake of the hand. Those two train together so often. Well, here we have Darren Sadler again driving away. He just burnt himself out with those early presses. Just took the victory. Darren, well done. 11 reps, just enough to get it done. That's an awkward bit of kit to lift, isn't it? Yeah, it felt easy at first, but it's not this much the way it's the swinging around, you know. Uh, once you start swinging, the more you try, the more you swing, you know. So, but uh, happy for the win, but he did really well, you know. Well, Paul, you were standing at the side there watching him. Did you think that uh, he was going to struggle and not quite get to your record? I thought he was going to get there easier. And when I saw him struggling, I thought maybe I could uh, take the win. But fair play to Darren, he squeezed that one last rep out. So, now well done to him. <laughs> And that all-important last rep for Darren Sadler proved the difference between him and Paul Wood. Jay Hughes just sneaked into third place with eight reps. Ten out of ten for Sadler, the man who so nearly made it through to the world's strongest man final last year. It's only one from four for second position. To find out who'll break the deadlock, join us after the break. Well, while the athletes ready themselves for the next event, I thought I'd take things rather more sedately aboard the rocking tug. The athletes, though, face a far sterner test. It's going to hit their legs, it's going to hit their backs. It's the deadlift. Well, it's not going to hit their stomachs. It's going to be too near Martin when he gets off that thing. The deadlift is another one of those events that you would think would uh, favour a little power packet like uh, Darren Sadler. I'll uh, attempt to lift... 230 with five barrels in it, and then they just keep adding another barrel. Paul Wood managed just two in that race for second. Two reps, possibly not what Paul was looking for at all. So, From Francis Ireland, Kirby. Francis Kirby! Well, you heard what uh, Darren Sadler said about him. Physique-wise, he's well equipped to do well at this one. That strong back. Not well, just about the back, though. You need the uh, power in the quads as well. He's a real hard man. Three times Ulster's strongest man, and you don't win that title easily. There's lots of tough, strong guys up there in Northern Ireland. Two reps already flown up here, and in these cold conditions, I think a score of three or four reps will be pretty good. Well, the fourth is just about there. That'll do it, but that looked to be on the edge of uh, Francis Kirby's limitations right there. No, five is not going to happen for him, I don't think. He's going to give it another go, though. He's getting a big psych up. That reverse grip. Now, he really struggled at four. Is there anything left there? No. 
Uh, four was the uh, outer limit of what he could manage here, but uh, as you say, Colin, four in these conditions is not shabby. Look at the determination driving each rep up. It's a very simple event. Just grab it and rip it. And that's exactly what he did. From England, Darren Sadler! So, Sadler knows. What uh, Kirby's put up, that gives him an advantage. If he can achieve four at Take a faster up, pace than Kirby, he'll stay uh, well on course here for maximum Lift. points on a place in the Lift. final. Lift. No problems with one. And two look comfortable too. He's a good deadlifter, Sadler. I think he's selling himself a little bit short, thinking that Kirby will win this because Darren, I think, could probably match him rep for rep here if he's on form. If not better, that's four. And did that go up easier than Kirby's? Well, well by his face, that you can tell he's not that uh, convinced he'll get this. But I think it was a faster time. And if I'm right, that'll put him into top spot. Well, you're absolutely right, Nick. It's five seconds quicker than what Kirby managed. And look at the way he pulls, attacks it off the ground very, very fast. Quite straight legs. First couple flew up, but the fourth one became a real struggle. I don't think he'll be too happy with the amount of reps, but uh, as long as it keeps him ahead of Kirby, that's what matters. Well, Darren, you're leading at the moment. Is that enough, though, to, uh, to get you through in top spot? Uh, I think so, yeah, to be honest. Uh, Francis, I thought, I thought was the best deadlift in our group. Um, when I seen him do four, I thought he could do four fast. But the fifth one was a uh, hell of a lot heavy, you know, it was really heavy. Everyone seems to be struggling with this one. It's catching a little people by surprise. Yeah, I think it, it was certainly heavier than I thought it'd be. Uh, but hopefully I've done enough, but uh, time will tell. You've got Jay Hughes coming up. He's a good deadlifter. What are you going to expect from him in this one? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen him deadlift for a little while, but people can get better in a short time period, you know, if they put the work in, in the gym. So anything could happen. Please welcome the next competitor. And here comes uh, Jay Hughes, making his first appearance on the national stage. From England, the uh, Jay South Hughes. of England strongest man. Now moving up into the big league. And so far acquitting Take himself very well indeed. Lift. It's an interesting battle for uh, second place behind oh. Dallas Savage at the moment, isn't it? Lift. Any one of four men could possibly go through. At the moment, it's uh, Francis Kirby with four reps that's in pole position, but can Hughes edge past him? The first two looks OK, but the third doesn't. Oh, he's got there. He's got there, but the nose has gone. Some bleeding from inside the nose. That usually tells you the man's at the edge of his physical endurance. And so it has proved, surely. I'm not sure he should even attempt this. The blood vessel gone inside the nose. So he's got that to think about. And he's got a fourth, and it's not going to happen for him, no. That's it. Yeah, just too much pressure there. It was a good effort from Jay Hughes. He attacked it well. First couple of reps flew up fairly easily, but then the third rep was a real telling lift. That extra 20 kilos that the barrel adds was just enough to put him on the real limit. He jacks it up the thighs and just gets the third one. So the last From competitor Scotland, is Lewis McLean. Also very much in the mix. Remember, he had a terrible start Take your grip. in the uh, duck walk and Lift. chain, but managed to finish third there. Now, four is the target. There's number two. Oh, what's he doing here? He's getting a little bit more chalk to work on the grip. Three. It's very wet conditions here. It's been raining heavily on and off uh, throughout this deadlift. That's an almost identical time to Jay Hughes as well that he's done. Can he make the fourth lift? That'll be uh, really interesting if he can do this, but he can't. Oh, he didn't lock his hips out there. He was so close, wasn't he? Oh, that is a shame. And I'm not sure whether he's got third or fourth. It's really too close to call. Well, he's done it by three hundredths of a second faster than Jay Hughes. He'd have got the fourth, though. It would have been the icing on the cake. Yes, there was more there for him, wasn't there? But just missed it.
Another victory for Sadler. He's really showing all his class and experience. After a disappointing safe lift, Francis Kirby is back in business. Sadler well clear with 15 points, but things could hardly be closer for second. Lewis McLean is showing impressive form after a lengthy layoff. Now, this, as any child will tell you, is a centrifuge. The centrifugal force is trying to force me out of the back of the cage, as opposed to centripetal force, which is the force required to make a body move in a circular motion at a constant speed, in much the same way a satellite will orbit the Earth. It has nothing to do with the next event. I just thought you might be interested. Yep, you can't beat a bit of GCSE physics from Professor Bayfield. Oh, feel sick just thinking about it. And these competitors are going to feel pretty sick looking at what they've got to do next. They've got to carry a 175-kilogram shield as far as they can. It's not a race. It's just how far can you carry that thing. And it is a strength-sapping, heartbreaking shield. Grip is absolutely vital. Paul Wood was the first up. He had the misfortune to go first. 60 metres is not bad, but nothing special. And when you're in last place in a race for top two spots, you've got to do better than that. Although nobody could say Paul didn't put everything he had into it. Lewis McLean found that his grip was forced apart by the shield, but still Lewis wouldn't give up. He fought for every centimetre he could possibly manage as gravity eventually winning out. Exactly the same point that Paul Wood had to stop. So here's Jay Hughes, the new kid on the block. Jay Hughes! Jay Hughes. Chatham, Kent. Uh, I live with my brother. Um, my job, I'm an electrical engineer by the day. I do a bit of door work in the evening on Friday, Saturday nights. I actually got through to the junior Mr. Universe. I come third. Uh, come third in the junior Mr. Britain. And I won the junior Mr. England. Every now and then, it daunts on me, and it's like well, I could make an idiot of myself on TV. <laughs> Well, it's very simple. 60 metres will put you right in the mix. If you can just make that next turn, though, and just go 61 metres, you're going to get some good points. And it's so close, that battle for second spot. And luck wasn't on his side in the deadlift, beaten by three hundredths of a second by Lewis McLean, the Scotsman. And if he's going to book a place in the final, he really needs to produce something pretty special here. He needs to get up to the end of this track now and turn. That would take him past the 60-metre mark. You see Yoko Ahala there, the former world's strongest man, right behind him, just in case when he does give it up, he will fall, and he will fall backwards. Yoko is there to catch him. Well, he's done terrifically well, but the eyes are starting to go. Everything's starting to go. Somehow he's still putting steps ahead, but the eyes, you can see the oxygen just draining out of the head. But 73.2, excellent work from Jay Hughes. Superb, Jay Hughes attacking that. He looked tied around the 50 meter mark, but he knew he had to beat that 60 meters. And he's got from some vital Ireland, points from that. Francis Kirby. And he's put some pressure on this man, Francis Kirby, who knows that, first of all, he's got to get past 60. That's an absolute Good must. Grip for Francis, but he's got to be thinking 73.2 as well. He's in second place at the moment, but by a very narrow margin. If he fails to do 60 metres, that race for second place gets blown wide open. So far looking good, but uh, nobody's really struggled with the first 20, or even the first 40, but after that, the going gets very heavy indeed. He's got good momentum, good rhythm. That grip is looking sound as well. That's a very impressive first 40. Great second turn there as well. He's driving away up to the 60-metre mark, and he still has his hands clapped. That is so useful. Well, he is a known strength athlete, isn't he? This is what he's good at, but it's starting to go. But the 73.2 of Jay Hughes is under threat here, and I think it's gone. It's gone, so that's guaranteed second place at the very least for Francis Kirby. That'll cement his position at the leaderboard. 
He'll be happy enough with that 83 metres. More importantly, he's knocked off the three guys that are in his slipstream. Well, if he doesn't make the final, he'll look back at this and say, at least I gave everything. Absolutely everything. From England, Darren Sadler. Darren Sadler has a, a clean sweep at the moment. He'll Don't want to uh, make sure it stays that way as well. At the moment, he's cruising to a place in the final. If he did have a meltdown in this event, though, it, uh, it could still be interesting. But no one's expecting Darren Sadler to melt down. Cracky, he's almost running with that shield. That's impossible what he's doing at the moment. Just touch of the Marius Kudzinovsky about that performance, isn't there? He's fit, he's strong, he's fast, and he's able to breathe where others aren't. You'd think with his shorter arms he'd struggle to get around it, but he's doing something right, that's for sure. Well, here's the 60. Now, a little bit slower there, just starting to wobble. But pride being what it is, oh, well, that's interesting. For 59 metres, he looked terrific, but it's like you say, Colin, that turn takes so much out of him. And as soon as the hands went, that was it. He couldn't hold it on the biceps, just too heavy. Ulster's strongest man beats his nearest rival by nearly 10 metres, but Jay Hughes will be well pleased with his effort. Sadler looks odds-on to make the final after picking up another three points. The real battle now looks to be for that second qualifying place. At the moment, Kirby's in command. Points of axis and angles of rotation are important considerations when designing a good fairground ride, as they are when designing a test for our strongmen. However, sitting on one of these as it spins through 360 degrees and at 90 degrees to the ground is considerably easier than having to flip 300 kilos through 180 degrees. Next up, it's the Fingles Fingers. You know, somebody around here is having way too much fun. But it won't be the five guys that are taking on the Fingles Fingers. Because these fingers, made of steel, just get heavier and heavier and harder and harder. Now, Paul Wood managed three fingers in a reasonable time, but finger number four was just too much for him. Please welcome our next two contestants. And what an interesting heat this is going to be. So we have Francis Kirby. From England, Jay Hughes. And this man Hugh. here, Jay Hughes. Hughes has got a little bit of distance and from to Ireland, make up. Francis Kirby. On this man here. It looks like Darren Sadler is safe, barring something extraordinary. But it's the race for second we're interested in here. Kirby currently occupies that second spot. Hughes. If he can beat the uh, Ulsterman here, will definitely keep himself in contention with the stones still to come. Whichever way you look at it, whatever happens, Colin, this young man on the right here is definitely one for the future. I think he's one for today because he can lift stones as well. These last two events are really quite good for him. It's the first time he's attacked the fingers, and look how well he's doing. Already driving up finger number four, Kirby. Has to pull and something out here. He's slowing and now he's in trouble. When it hits the shoulders, that's usually disaster. So Hughes has hit the wall here. And he's not giving up, though, no, is he? he's not. Look at that. Kirby's in a lot of trouble because he's got the full length of that finger to try and twist off the shoulder, to try and turn it. And that's going to be an awfully tough ask. The clock's ticking. Can Hughes take a fourth finger? If neither of them turn it, Hughes will have still beaten Kirby because he got the first three done faster. He's stuck right at the 40 to 5 degree mark there. That's where it's at its absolute heaviest. If Hughes can just get it up uh, another few degrees. It starts to get easier, but he's running out of time. 75 seconds will come and go. No matter. Kirby couldn't finish off his nearest rival. Hughes has kept himself alive with the stone still to come. That was a brave effort from the young man. Well, I guess it doesn't matter about the fourth finger there because he beat Kirby to the third. Crucial points. Yes, and how significant might that be? Well, it's quite clear to see the effort that he had to put on there. The points are starting to get in the bank for you. You're getting closer and closer to the position you want. Can you do that in the Atlas Stones? 
definitely. No doubt about it. Stones is a good event for me. Just depends how Kirby's finishes. I'll do what I've got to do, but it all depends on him. Now, that event obviously took a lot out of you. Can you get your strength back, recover in time for the Stones? Yeah, definitely, no doubt. I'll be fine, yeah. Please welcome our next two contestants. Well, oh, Darren Sadler is uh, coming up next. From Scotland, Along with Lewis McLean. This man here, Lewis McLean from Fort William. And from England, Darren Sadler. He can, if he wants to, just sort of coast through the rest of the competition, but I don't think coasting Fred is in Darren Fred. Sadler's nature. No chance. Darren really wants to do well here. This is one of the events that uh, he really likes to show all of the tall guys he can do. Everybody says this is a tall man's event, and at five foot nine, just watch him. He proves that theory wrong, that's for sure. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Lewis McLean's having some real trouble here with this second finger. Technique all over the place there. He got there, but the technique was so bad that you wonder if a third finger's going to go for the Scot. Meanwhile, no problems whatsoever for Darren Sadler, who continues to remain on course for the full set here. Here is number four. Oh, a bit of a wobble there, but he's kept it going. And he's almost at the turning point. He won't want to let it go on the shoulder, that's for sure. It's a real battle here between gravity and iron will. And Will wins out. Sadler nails finger number four and says, thank you, that'll do. And indeed, it will do. He doesn't need any more. That's a gutsy effort from McLean. He looked all over the place after two fingers, but he's got the third one over. He's no mug, Sadler, is he? He didn't even bother going onto the fifth one there, saving his energy for the final now. Oh, well, Darren, experience showing they're doing just enough to get yourself through to the finals. Yeah, obviously I've done them before, uh, all five, and I've sort of asked you what I had to do, but still feel tough, you know? <laughs> well, we talked to the bigger guys, saying that they're suited to this event. For the shorter guys, is it tougher? Uh, logically, yeah, I think so, but uh, not a lot I can do about that, I don't think. <laughs> not at all, but you did well. <laughs> Thanks. Sadler again using all his experience to book his place in the final. Jay Hughes takes second place and a very useful four points in his quest for qualification. All eyes are now on the battle for second. Francis Kirby's slip-up might just open the door for Hughes. Lewis McLean and Paul Wood will battle it out to avoid the wooden spoon. All will be resolved after the break. Minehead, and what a finale we've got to look forward to. Seven out of the eight places in the final of Britain's Strongest Man are booked. There is one place up for grabs, and it'll all be dependent on these Atlas stones. You know the drill if you've ever seen this before. Five stones, they go up in weight, it gets harder and harder. Paul Wood, who's out of the running, managed a creditable four stones. From Scotland, Lewis McLean. Lewis McLean. From and England, Darren Sadler Darren up next. Sadler. It'll mean a fascinating race off between Jay Hughes and Francis Kirby next yes, for that final spot. Sadler's already through. Interesting that he goes uh, for the uh, shirt free look on the uh, Atlas Stones. Now, why would that be, Colin? Well, I think besides the fact that he cuts a fine figure there, Nick, it's actually to do with the stone sticking to his chest. He's got the tacky glue up his arms, as you can see. He's also got it on his chest, and perhaps the T-shirt in these conditions with so much sweat and uh, humidity can slip. And look at this, Lewis McLean is beating Darren Sadler in the stones. If he gets that up, oh -ho -ho! That was a shame. That really was. He was a couple of centimetres away from a huge morale booster there. Lewis McLean, as it is, if neither man can put that fifth stone up, McLean will win this because he's got the four stones up in a much faster time, but we all want to see him do it. Come on, Lewis. Well, I would have bet my house on the fact that Sadler would get all five up here. He's got the old Spice Girl boots on to help him with the height. He is only five foot nine, but four stones for Sadler. Well, it doesn't bode that well for the final. Maybe he felt he'd done enough, maybe he didn't care, or maybe it is an omen. Well, look at Lewis McLean. How close was the Scotsman to getting that fifth stone up? Big disappointment for Darren. Only four stones for the Yorkshireman. 
from Ireland. And so it comes Francis down to these two, Kirby. Jay Hughes and Francis Kirby. Kirby currently in second spot. From England, But he's Jay got some Hughes. demons to exercise here with the Stones. Francis Kirby from Ballymoney, Northern Ireland. I've been a couple of times to Britain's Strongest Man. Um, the first year was, I think it was 2001. It was third in the group the last time. I just missed out the stones. I couldn't get the last stone on the wall, so that, that put me out of the final. So hopefully this time I'll, I'll, I'll make the final. The other competitors, you know, um, they're, looking, they're looking good, but I'm just as good, if not better. That's it. Hughes has got to beat Kirby. That's the first part of the equation. If Kirby can keep his nose in front of the young man, he'll be through no matter what. So this is a real sudden death winner-take-all battle, and it's Hughes that's got his nose just in front, and I wonder if Kirby's thinking about his previous problems with the Stones. Hughes is pulling away. And this is getting very interesting, and the pressure's really on Kirby. And doesn't he feel that pressure? It's at Stone 5 for Hughes. If this goes on, well, he's got it. Now, Kirby, Kirby can still make it. If he can put this stone on, he'll finish second, and then it goes to a count back. If he doesn't get this on, we've got to start checking our calculators and our stopwatches, and he's given it up. Is that time fast enough for second spot? No, it isn't. That's it, Francis Kirby again, beaten by the stones at Britain's Strongest Man. Jay Hughes goes through to the final, and this was the moment he did it. How triumphant. He gets the fifth stone, the only man in his heat. All five stones and a blistering time give Jay Hughes the all-important win. Francis Kirby will be bitterly disappointed, the stones proving to be his downfall once more. Joining Darren Sadler in the final will be the competition's youngest athlete, Jay Hughes. Kirby finishes third, with Lewis McLean beating Paul Wood into last. Well, a tremendous climax there to Heat 4. We now know all our finalists. Darren, you're one of those finalists. You happy with the way things went for you? Yeah, everything went well, I think. Um, you know, I haven't sort of uh, burnt myself out, used too much energy. Um, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Now, you got through quite easily. Is it going to be difficult for you to raise yourself for the final? I think I'll have to do, you know. Um, there'll be no... Nobody can hold back now. Everyone's got to give it 110%, because if you, if you don't, you know, you won't get anywhere. And you're confident? in yourself that you can hit those levels and, uh, yeah, and win the thing? So. Yeah, I've been training hard and uh, I think uh, everyone's in with a good chance and me as good as any, you know? Well, the only way to find out is to watch it. All the guys are through now. We know our finalists. Next stop is the final. See you next time. Join us tomorrow for the final. That's here on 5 at 8 o'clock. Next tonight, we've live UEFA Cup football as Blackburn take on Finland's Maipa 47.